Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I'm your host, Ed Troxel, and I am your business and tech expert. So today is a special day. There's a slight delay, so it's okay. Uh, but today we have a very, very special guest, or should I say guests, that are going to be appearing today. Yeah, it's going to be the first time here on the show that we're going to bring not one guest, but two guests on at the same time with this guy. So um, you'll want to make sure that you share this out to your friends, tag somebody. I'm actually just finishing my share right now. This is going to be good. I'm here with so-and-so and and -and so-and-so are joining me. This said joking. Are joining me live. So this is a good time for you to share this out, and apologies that I'm not looking at you guys right now, but you know how it goes when you're the one-man show or the one-woman show, right? Hey, Mindy, welcome, welcome. Yes, this is going to be a good one, you guys. We kinda, we, we've kind of we talked about this a little bit before uh, last week on Friday's episode when we talked about uh, the Toys R Us uh, falling, you know, the collapse of Toys R Us. We, we had a great conversation yesterday. If you guys missed yesterday's episode, we talked about... Uh, your about page, and we had a guest uh, expert on that shared information about the um, about page, which was fantastic, and we're actually going to talk a little bit about that today in one of our discussions that we're going to have, and so you want to make sure that you share this out, tag a friend to make sure that they come over, um, because it's going to be good, and it's going to be a really good discussion. Hey, Paula, welcome, Uh, and I want you guys to engage not only with me, but with my guests and also with each other. Uh, You know the regulars. You guys know what's going on. The magic happens in the comments. Uh, For those who are new, please be sure, even if you're watching the replay, to let us know uh, that you're new, that you're checking us out. Let us know how you found us. Um, I say us because it's not just me. It's all of you guys. We're all in this together. Um, And if if this is your first time tuning into one of my lives, uh, welcome. Personally, let me welcome you and let you know that uh, everything you need is either in this live or you're going to be able to get to the next step, which is over at edtroxel.com. And I'm going to put a blank promo for myself because why not? Um, And I'm going to tell you guys uh, that if you are not in the Hey Ed membership group, well, you're missing out. Uh, so I'm going to put that link in the comments. My computer is super slow. FYI, for those who are new, I use my computer to go live. So that way I can use this awesome program, Ecamm Live, which you're going to see more of this craziness right now in just a second. Uh, but let me put in that Hey Ed link there for you. Uh, that's Even if you aren't ready to become a member, that's no problem. But take a look at the page. It's pretty awesome. I got to say so myself. Um, and, uh, and those who are new in the Facebook, uh, sorry, not Facebook, but those who are new in the Hey Ed membership, you guys, uh, I just made some updates, so I'll be tagging you soon in the private network, so just FYI. Uh, so, hey Whitney, oh, oh, so before we even get started, most of you know if you saw my personal live last night, but uh, Whitney killed it yesterday. So if you tuned into yesterday's episode, We had talked about the about page and how basically the message was you just have to start. I don't care what it is that you're trying to do. You just have to start. And then, um, yes, Chrissy, I do have a link to the Ecamm Live. If you go to edtalktv.com, it will be right there, and there's the link for you. Um, So Whitney did an amazing job. She told us yesterday on our live broadcast, which was probably, I want to say, around the 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time mark, maybe a little bit later she was going to publish her site. She was going to finally say yes and publish that site. I'm not even kidding you. I don't even know what time it was when when it actually published, but it was probably around 8 when I actually noticed. And I was so tired. I needed to eat. But I said, no, I need to look at this site. I was just blown away from her logo, which caught my eye right away, to the way she structured her whole page. I didn't even go to her menu, really. I mean, I looked at it real quick because I'm curious, but I didn't go past that because I wanted to stay on the home page. That's how good it was. Um, it is, because it's live now. Uh, but I want you to know that if this is your first time tuning in, we, we do the work. We, we, we show up, 
We deliver, we engage, and we do the work. And that's the most important thing. So please understand that. And that's why I always say, you know, comment, share, bring people in because this is, this is a unique space for all of us. And, uh, and today is going to be really, really good. So, um, sometimes I do random news. I'm not going to do random. Well, I guess I can sort of do random news because it's not so random to me, but it's could be for you. Um, I have a surprise. Well, actually, actually, I take that back. I take that back. Let me bring on our guests. Maybe, let me bring on our guests first. Let me bring on our guests. So, um, let me go ahead and have them unmute themselves, and I'm going to bring them onto the screen and see what we're working with here. It's going to take a few seconds, you guys, so bear with us. Okay. Can you hear me? I hear you. Yes. We can hear you. Awesome. We can can hear you. guys. Perfect. All right, all right. So I'll have you guys introduce yourself in just a minute. But, but what I was going to say for random news is I literally went, well, I went to the post office today and I literally got this bad boy in. Yes, yes. Whatever. This, <laughs> Yay! This one, this one, wait, you can't see me. Let me see if I can do it this way. There you go. It's from this yeah. one. The reframe it. <laughs> so, Erica, thank you. I haven't read your note yet because I literally opened it right before the show and I was like, okay, I have to give her a huge shout out. I got my first copy right here, so I'm excited to read it nope. and to read your note. <laughs> I'm glad I got there okay. Yay! Yes, so thank you so much. Um, go ahead and, uh, Erica, you can introduce yourself and then we'll hit Mickey and then we'll go from there. Okay, so my name is Erica R. Meyer. I'm a voiceover talent, entrepreneur, and author of that book. <laughs> that Ed just showed y'all right now. And basically, just keeping it really quick and really short, is just about keeping busy adults sane, reducing your stress level right away. That way you can have a better quality of life. I mean, it's just a really, really simple tool that you can apply to your life every day. Love it. Love it. That's me. <laughs> My turn? Yep. Hey guys, I'm Mickey Webb, and as a school psychologist, let me say who doesn't need that book, right, to keep themselves sane. So um, I'm an, a special education consultant, and I solve the problem of building capacity, helping people know what tools and strategies to use to serve people with different abilities, or disabilities as we call it. I love it. And- you guys, I'm so excited because uh, we're going to try something new today. We, we so far are working real good with tech right now. We have all three of us on. There's not too much of a delay. Hopefully on your end, everything is good in terms of you guys tuning in via the uh, Facebook Live and checking in on the comments. Um, but we're, we're really going to talk today about this discussion about retail, you know, brick and mortar versus online and what, how this came about was we had such a great, great episode on Friday about Toys R Us. I mean, it was amazing. And what happened was afterwards, uh, Mickey and Erica started to connect with me and was like, hey, you know, what about XYZ? Why don't we start talking about this? What if we did a roundtable discussion? So that's how we got here. And that's how we were like, okay, cool. What day? What time? Well, we kind of know what time because that's when the show starts, but <laughs> what, what day works for all three of us and um, how can we make this happen? And now fast forward to today, this is where we're at. So that that's kind of the backstory of what we're going to talk about today. And for those who aren't familiar, uh, Toys R Us is closing their stores. Uh, they they basically are, are out. Uh, it, it's a sad day, but it's one of those that we can learn from it and we can try to figure out what opportunities they had and when they should have taken those. And we kind of talked about that, you know, where you have, you have your business, you have your, um, your team, you have your, uh, stores and, and it kind of just funnels down from there. And then above all else, you also sometimes will have a landlord. And so it affects everyone, not just the business itself, not just the name, um, not just the owner, but everyone involved. And so, that's how we got to this part, and I'm going to let uh, one of you guys jump in and go from there. 
Sure. I'll, I'll jump first, Erica. I, I was thinking, um, you know, kind of as we were introducing ourselves, it might seem like um, a bit of a quirky panel to put together for this topic. But the thing is, um, when we were chatting and we were so passionate about it, I was thinking like, because we're all consumers, like that's like the total common thread. We happen to all be business people, sure. And most of the people who um, follow us and watch in these in this group are business people, entrepreneurs. So this topic interests us specifically, but truly it interests every consumer because the first thing we feel like when Toys R Us with the announcement that it was going under came out, I didn't think of it as a business person. Like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what was broken in their model. That came, that was my later thought. My first thought was as a consumer, oh, I want to be a Toys R Us kid, like yes. a part of my childhood. It's been nostalgic. End of an era, as they say. You feel your age. You feel like, whoa, what? That can't happen. Um, you feel that invincibility that, that life kind of has sometimes fade away because, like, well, if that giant could fall, then any, any, um, entity could fall and that's when I started thinking of it as from a business owning point of view what do you do to extend the life cycle of your business yeah it was all just nostalgia for me as soon as I you know that's what got us to talking about it because I'm just like remember this remember this and then and then the business side started to kind of the wheel started to turn even though I'm very much on the the you know a climbing entrepreneur on the bottom and I don't pretend to be an expert about brick and mortar businesses it's still interesting to then kind of change the viewpoint and shift it to look at it from a business point of view and remember oh this happened to Best Buy oh this happened to Circuit City oh this happened and they were all niche big box stores they're all niche because I brought up um in those comments I said well what about you know Target and Walmart ain't going anywhere, but what are they doing right? And somebody brought up, like, well, they're specialized in everything. Like, they have everything. And so then I was thinking about the ones that had everything, like the Kmarts, yeah. that were kind of those everything stores, too, but that have, you know, gone by the yeah. wayside. And so it just got us to talking about all of those, you know, just those rise and falls. And that's a good yeah. point, too, about the, um, you know, as entrepreneurs, right, we talk about you can't cater to everyone because then you're talking to no one. But then here we are, we're like, well, wait a minute, but Walmart's doing it, Target's doing it, you know, these, these stores are doing it. But, but it's a little different, and, and what we have to remember is that they also, um, how do I want to put it, like, they, they're, they've, their, mar their model is different, and... And they're constantly trying to figure out what they can do to keep up. Like Walmart is trying to, I, I don't shop there, but I will say that the efforts that I see are good efforts. They're trying to get people to buy online or come in the store. But if you buy online, you can come to the store to pick it up. We'll give you a parking space. We'll even bring it out to you so that there's no inconvenience. So that right there is a solid effort, like solid A plus effort to get you to come into both stores because they still own both stores, you know, one digital, one uh, reality, one in person. Right. I yeah, you bring up a good point about the, about the curbside. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. And that's something that everybody's like, even like the little pharmacies like CVS offer curbside. Yes. Yeah, that's huge. And that's Convenient. another you know, way. Right. And that's another yeah. way that these brick and mortars stay afloat for sure. They're always looking for ways to make um, the customer's experience better, less taxing on the customer. And I, I noticed that even though um, Target and Walmart are the earth thing under one roof store, they do still. um Target, it's a bit redundant, but they, they target a certain type of buyer, like Walmart, we think, and sometimes we joke about it, but we think of, you know, okay, the buyer that's going to go to Walmart, you're looking for a deal. You don't want to have to get dressed up. Right. You want to, you know what I mean? You want to just roll into Walmart. You don't want to hit up two stores to buy the diapers and the groceries and the, the, the baseball bat that your son needs for after school Little League today. Do you know what I mean? There's a certain um, type of buyer 
that has money to spend and they're they're targeting that buyer with it and i don't know you know again certainly no economist lord knows that's true but when i think about myself as a consumer and toys r us i can't say i see or saw that clarity right. um or or that kind of like it's not like they ever became the discount toy store right or do you know what i mean something yeah. that set it apart in a way that maybe would have reinvented it who knows well and right that, yeah and that's the other thing too you know we we mentioned this the other day that um with toys r us and i only found this out when i watched one of gary v's videos on facebook yeah, yeah. that they actually started to give well not give but they started to have a channel through amazon for people to buy their toys therefore they gave their customers basically to amazon to amazon because they they only Got know used to buying online yeah exactly they only know amazon so it's one of those yep. things like they just shot themselves in the foot there and yep. then on top of that it's like like think about disney and what, at least what I see is like Toys R Us could have made their stores like Disneyland, right? Yeah. Because well, that, think about the Disney stores in yeah, the mall. Right. I mean, their prices are crazy, relatively speaking, but I've never been in the mall with a kid who didn't want to go in yeah. that store. Yep. Yes. Even if we weren't going to get anything because of the experience when you go in there. Right. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that Toys R Us did try to do something um, maybe proactively when I, I remember kind of vaguely, I don't know about when, but when they launched Babies R Us, oh, right. I remember thinking, oh, that's right. That's different. And that that was probably I don't know that that was, um, you know, Internet buying connected because it was really kind of preceded that. But some idea of how can we expand this business? How can we do something differently? But, um, yes, yeah, somewhere Gary, down the road. Gary, we brought up out. a really good point and we'll, we'll get into like the, the big box experience that, you know, some of these others that they, they do, but Gary was just like, they could have like built a slime station experience. Yeah. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, that's right. Because kids right. love the slime. Yep. Like right. love the slime. They can't get enough of it. Just like, that's brilliant. Yeah. And well, they just, look at the, McDonald's and Burger Kings with the Playlands. Yep. I right? was just going to say, so tying into that is um, how cool would have been, okay, you guys, this is like big picture right now, okay? How cool would it have been if Toys R Us decided to close the Baby R Us but combined it under one roof? So now you have the toys and the yeah. clothes. Again, I, I haven't been to Toys R Us, yeah. so I don't know if they did somewhat of that, but... Assuming that Toys R Us was only the toys and the bikes and things like that, they could have closed the Baby R Us. They could have included the clothes almost like as if they were their own Target or Walmart. Mm -hmm. The other mm -hmm. thing, if you think about it, and some movie theaters are doing this now um, because this was an article not too long ago where movie theaters were trying to figure out how do we get people back into the theaters because they're not paying $15 yeah. to come see a movie when they can do it in the comfort of their home. Mm -hmm. So the article had some movie theaters where they had jungle gyms in there for the kids, like hangout spots. Toys R Us would be a perfect place. You include one of those um, <clears throat> those uh, trampoline parks, you know, and mm -hmm. I say park, but it could just be a trampoline station. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, parents can go there on rainy days and stuff. And don't tell me that you're not going to end up buying a single toy or something if you went in there, even if they didn't charge for that jumpy chances are you're not going to leave right. that place without buying something. Right. Right. I mean, imagine guys think about, um, the, the kids room at your gym. Yes. What would it have been to parents to be able to go Christmas toy shopping without trying to hide what's in the basket from the kid that's in the basket? Yes. I've been there. I've done those days lying to my son, telling him, no, that's for your cousin. No, that's not for you. That's for your cousin. Because I had no child care, but I got a Christmas shop. I got to buy the stuff right in front of him, you know, covering it up, telling him, look that way. What was that? And putting blankets on top of things. Imagine if they had a, a kid's room where they're coloring and doodling like the one at the gym. And you can you can do your shopping and they can help you sneak it in the car and then grab your kid and go. Tarina, that is a good one in the comments. They could have had classes 
for moms and kids. Yes, mommy and me classes. Yeah, like, you guys, Michael's, I I don't shop at Michael's very much, but Michael's has little art classes. They have training sessions. Even the library, you guys, when I was uh, traveling a couple weeks ago and I was, uh, had to come to you from the library because the internet was out at the house, um, you guys, they actually, right after my show, I perfectly timed it because right after the show, they had to kick me out because they had story time where parents would bring the kids for story time. It was free. Yeah. Like, how yeah. cool would that be to have a Disney princess at Toys R Us come and share a sing-along for kids at 4 p.m. every day or yeah. once once a week or whatever? I mean, all these missed opportunities. Jeez. That's because they don't have us on the panel. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> See, you people have- does it. They have kids' workshops. Yeah. For building uh, bird bird houses and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's all about building that interactive experience. And you brought up theaters, which of course I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll try not to go on a tangent on that one because I'm like, super passionate about that particular subject. But like anyone who knows me knows, I rave up and down about Alamo Draft House because they create an experience that is fun, that is unique, and that brings people back into the movie theater. And they actually, it, it, it invites people to get there 45 minutes early without even blinking an eye because they create this amazing experience for you. No and so, yeah, and so that's well, again, one the of the ways they innovate. There. What's that? Is it, what's the experience yeah. like there? So they, they put together a, like, Slot, not like a video series or just all these things that are unique to the show that you're about to about to see. Like for example, oh. like when we went to uh, like see Star Wars, for example, they did a little like video that they played before the movie with like maybe old nostalgic Star Wars like documentaries or silly things that are from the web. Or they put together all of these really really cool like mini vignettes of all this stuff. And so they do that combined with the food combined with all of that. I mean, it's just so much fun and they do it unique to every single movie that you're about to see. Each movie has its own like tailored pre-show. That's what you need. That's what it's called. Basically pre-show. So, I mean, again, it's all about that experience. It's so fun. So there's a theater in Hollywood that started doing that. And if I'm not mistaken, they were kind of dying on the vine, an old, old building, um, El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. And they started doing that probably, you know, 15 years ago or a decade or so ago. But yes, where it's themed now. And so they show a lot of kids movies, pretty much exclusively kids movies. But their characters are going to be there. There's the characters are dressed up signing autographs out front. There's like draw pictures of so many schools go on field trips. They roll in with 35 kids. There you go. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. Brilliant. And Brilliant. Yeah. That's Interactive. Key. That's the key is what is the experience that you're providing? And, and you guys, even if you have an online business, it still matters even more so because it's harder in a way to do that online experience to get people to really be able to stay engaged with your content because they have to read or they have to watch. You know, they can't just show up and, and you tell them unless you have a specific video that really they're wanting to click on. Because remember, there has to be an action before they can actually get to that video. So there's a lot of things that you have to do for that experience, both online and in stores. Yeah, we were we were talking about um, earlier, um, Erica and I were looking at some of the articles that were uh, published within the last year or so about what businesses need to do to stay relevant or extend their lifespan, brick and mortar businesses. And it was talking about that, the experience, it's got to be about the experience. You've got to listen to what your customers want. And I said to Erica, I was like, OMG, this is what Ed says to us, show up, deliver and engage. In a nutshell, that's what that person who was writing this article was saying, like, hey, big businesses, you can't just get by on the fact that you've got an overwhelming amount amount of inventory anymore. That's no longer what the customer wants to experience because they can get that on the internet. They can get un- completely unlimited inventory. And one one um, writer even pointed out, and 
it's a lot easier to search through that inventory on the internet than it is in your big store. So, so you've got to give us an experience. And they were, you know, sharing about stores that do that. And I was like, show up, deliver, engage. Isn't there you that go. What that says? All of Ed's principles. If they would just follow that, they'd be fine. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. See, you guys know. That's why all of you watching and all of you commenting, you yeah. guys are going to be successful because you know. Like, it, it, that's, it's just that simple. And, and I love, Emmy, I hope that I'm saying your name correctly. Um, <clears throat> She, she put it perfectly. She said, <clears throat> towards the end of her comment, no one wants to put the effort anymore into market research. And that oh. is huge. Oh. That is Boom. huge. Right? Mic drop. Yeah. Boom. You can't really Mic see. Drop. There we Seriously. Go. <clears throat> it's one Seriously. of those things. Really, they want the easy sell. And there, there was, I'm sure, a period of time um, in the big box store era not that that era is over but just saying maybe at the height of it or whatever um where it was easy to get the sell just you're, you're just big you just have a lot of stuff we've got a lot of stuff come here <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. and um, and right. and not so much anymore you have to do the market research and listen to the customer yeah you yes. have to do the work yes. right like that's the whole thing is that now you actually have to work before it was like, okay, I, I did my job. You know, I had one task and I did my job check, but now it's like, no, how can we go deeper? How can we uncover what no one else is doing right now? How can we try? Right? Because a lot of people don't want to try something, especially if they're big retailers because yeah. they, they have a lot that they could lose, I guess. Um, but they also have a lot of things that, and I'm generalizing here, but they have a lot of things that they're kind of like, well, I'm not sure if we can try that right now. We, we really need to stick to the X, Y, Z. And it's like, I mean, look at you guys. We haven't even been on for a half hour yet. We haven't even had this whole discussion for a half hour, like maybe 20 minutes, if that. And how much, even if you're watching the replay, how much have you already are like mind blown? Like, even if you just look at the comments, like anybody <clears throat> who is doing some market research right now has a gold mine right here on this show. Not because of me, not because of Erica, not because of Mickey, but because of the content and the conversations we're having right now. And because of you guys commenting, it's a gold mine. And so remember that not just for this show, but wherever you go online, remember that this is your market research. This is what you need to be paying attention to. Yeah. Absolutely. What are people talking about? And I think that sometimes the feedback is um, to our egos, hard to hear, yeah. mm -hmm. but um, to our wallets, it's critical. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and as a business owner, to your wallet, it's critical if you want increased sales and revenue, but also to your purpose, assuming you are serving your business, your your whatever product or service services in an area of your passion and of your purpose, you owe it to that yeah. to find out what is the experience this customer is looking for. These customers, my target group, what are they looking for and how can I deliver that? Because what a shame to have your purpose unfulfilled because you didn't want to hear the feedback that we don't want it like this. We want it like that. Yeah, we should always be refining, always be refining. And it, it, it reminds me of what I, I think I might have commented it on a show earlier about how when I used to produce and direct commercials, I remember um, going to a car dealership that I was developing a commercial for, and I had brought up the idea. And at the time, it was forward thinking because Twitter and, you know, Facebook and all that were very new. And I said, you should consider doing a social media campaign because this is something that's kind of, you know, on the rise. And they wouldn't hear it at all. They're just like, oh, no, that's that's too new. That'll go away. Uh, huh? We're on it now, bud. Are they, are they still, <laughs> you still in still business? Cars? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like you have to be able to get out of that old school mentality, too. I mean, don't stay there. You have to innovate constantly and be, I mean, talking about market research, like always have it going on, right? It's true. I was just listening, you guys, this morning to a podcast. Um, 
uh, Damon, sorry, the guy, Fubu, the shark. Oh, yeah, Damon John. Yeah. Anyway, Damon Johns. Um, I was just listening to him um, this morning. I listened to his podcast, and he was interviewing um, the man who founded LegalZoom, right? Oh, wow. Um, I don't know if you guys remember back in the day when they first started marketing LegalZoom, Robert Shapiro was their, you know, sp spokes guy, right? And so he was talking about how when he first got the idea, he's an attorney, though he didn't ever really want to be per se an attorney. And so he was trying to pitch this idea of this online business back when online wasn't everything. And he was saying, you know, I have this idea, like what if people could go on the internet and they could get these documents instead of paying an attorney, you know, $300 an hour, to write this document that really on the attorney's end, they've written a thousand times. So they kind of have a template and they're billing, you know, lots and lots and lots of money to each separate person, even though they're pretty much by now just filling in some blanks. What if we marketed the fill in the blanks document to the consumers on the internet? And um, he was talking about um, trying to get, um, to pitch this to a group of investors. And he said, um, one of the primary guys who was a mentor of his pulled him aside and said, listen, this is, you've got to let this go. This is never going to happen. This internet thing is just a fad and it's a phase and it's going to go away. You need to go work for a law firm and be a lawyer. That, that is being a lawyer. And um, he said, I, I just couldn't listen to him. I, he's like, I thought, even I thought like he's probably right. I'm an idiot, you know, <laughs> but, but something in me is saying, I, I got to try this legal zoom. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's, <laughs> that's, that's how the many thing. of us incorporated our businesses today. Right. <laughs> and, and that's the interesting part too, you know, is that we have these experiences, you know, uh, just like Erica, when I had in my, you guys, I was so excited back in the day when I got my first marketing assistant job. It was like, I was like, oh my gosh, I finally got like the grown up job, right? It, it, it's, it's a full time marketing assistant, even though I worked part time elsewhere as well, just because that's who I am. Um, but it's one of those things where I was so excited and I was, I showed up and I did the work and I was so happy to get these ideas out because there's a lot up here it's still running. Like it's a waterfall all day long. It's not, there's no drought. Um, and it would always kill me because while the job, I had a job and I got to explore things, I wasn't able to actually succeed in moving forward with my ideas. Meaning mm. they kept shutting them down, not because they weren't good, but because at the time, they didn't think social media played a big part in their business. They didn't want to look at that. They wanted to focus on some older techniques and some older things, which, again, you can you should look at. Um, I'm not trying to say don't look at old books. I mean, I just read a design book from 1988, which was awesome, and it had great co content in there. You need to do your research and, and go all over the board with it. But... You need to be willing and open to trying new things, especially when it comes to free things like social media. You know, I'm not talking about ads necessarily. I'm just talking about now you can pop on a Facebook Live and test and talk with your customers. You can ask them questions. You can do a, a panel like we're doing right now. I, I mean, yes, there's, there's so many things that you have the power now to do. And so, you know, while I loved that job, um, and I got paid decent money, um, it still didn't fill, it didn't fill up here because everything I was bringing to the table was good, but we couldn't give it a shot. And so it's kind of like, well, why am I here? And, and yeah. you know, unfortunately yeah. it, it's not around anymore, but, um, it's one of those things that, you know, you, ha you have to be open to change. You have to be open to feedback and look at it as strengths and opportunities. Yes, yes, you have to. You have to. And I do you think, though, guys, that that is um, a hurdle that larger businesses have a hard time jumping over because of the layers of bureaucracy, yes. because there's a board of directors and they're, 
you know, not quite so innovative or they're not risk takers or whatever their investment style is as a board. They're more like, no, let's just keep doing it this way. And um, you, you don't get to do what we get to do all the time, which is call those shots, call your own shots. Right. You know? They have people that have to answer to. Which is yes, a lot. they have people to answer to who um, are, are um, gate guarders. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're gate keepers. The better, obviously. Yeah. It's yeah. so true. And not that their input isn't important because certainly um, you want to get wise counsel, but it's only one piece right. of input. And I, I think sometimes for those giant businesses, that input, that bureaucratic state, do it the way we've always done it. Um, input is all of the input. Yes. yes. And yes. Um, I want to mention, Amanda, this is huge. This is great. Facebook Lives take you to the customer, but also brings them to you. And that is oh. good. That is good. Um, that is so good. It, oh, I like that. It's it wonderful. brings the customer to you. Um, for an actual conversation, not just for them to make a, to do a transaction. Right. Yes. That's it's, kind of unique. It's yes. so true. And, and, you know, talking about transactions, we're going to transition here in a second to the Amazon bookstores, but, um, with transactions, you guys, for some of you who may be new, I, I used to work in retail. And so I was, before I left my nine to five, I was number one in sales by a long shot. And it's not because I am a good car sleazy salesman. That's like not my thing. Um, if you're a car salesman, I apologize. But um, for me, I wasn't worried about the sale today. I was worried about the relationship over time. And that's how I became the number one salesperson. And here's the thing. My colleagues were looking at me and trying to figure out like, what's the magic that Ed has? Like, because they were, they were ready to sell, sell, sell. And they were selling, you know, some days, you know, they would sell way more than I did. But here's the thing. They were focused on today, not over time. And when you focus on building that relationship over time, the sale today doesn't matter. Because the sale over time is going to be a lot more beneficial for everyone. So remember yeah. that in your business, especially if you're just starting out. Because it can be very... Um, depressing. It can be very uh, uh, heavy on your shoulders when you, when you don't make a sale today. Uh, but you have to realize that it, you have to work for that longer relationship, if that makes sense. Yeah. You're developing a relationship and it's sort of kind of not really off topic a little bit, but it reminds me of what I was reading and I've been reading building a story brand by Donald Miller. And he was talking about how I lost my point. Hold on. <laughs> I just lost my kind of kind of related to that. It's not. I'll I'll throw in this point that I was thinking. It hopefully you'll think of yours as well. While I'm I'm throwing this out there, when Ed, what you were just saying right now, I was thinking. You know what? It's not as sexy. It's not as glamorous to build a foundation of relationships. It's more you know woohoo thrilling to have those crazy high sales days. Yep. Followed by lulls you know, that you can blame on, oh, it's the slow season. Oh, you know, I don't know. Well, I had that good day last week. That was off the charts. Whereas the person who is steadily building relationships with a customer who may not make a purchase at all today, but when they come back, they're going to say, where's that Ed guy? It's yes. Exactly. exactly. Ed. Exactly. <laughs> and, and that, you guys, that yeah. has happened. Um, no joke. The store could have been empty. There was a few times where the store was empty. Like there's plenty of people to help the customer out. They yeah. waited 30 minutes for me to finish with my customer so that they could work with me, even though I didn't get commission and they could have been in and out quicker if they would have let somebody else help them. But no, they waited for me. That tells you a lot right there. And that's what you want yeah. for your business. Yeah. And to go back to that, I got the point back. Yeah, go, 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 go. He brought up, he said that people don't necessarily buy the best products. They buy what they can understand. Yes. And that ties into building a relationship. And that's huge 
Because I mean, if you, if, if you may not have the best product out there, but if you build their trust and their relationship and, and they may not have the sex, you may not have the sexiest thing, but if you help them to understand it, how can make it easier and make it like clear for them, they'll always come back to you, always come back to you. And that's one thing that I, I mean, that's what it reminded me of, Ed, when you said that talking about them waiting for, you know, to talk to you and go to you because you built that relationship already. And that's what kind of triggered that. I'm like, that's right, because they're not going to buy the best thing. They're going to buy with what they're familiar with, what they already understand. Good. Whoever made totally, it plain and simple. That totally happened to me, Erica, um, a few weeks ago when I first um, was going to use a tool to go live other than just hitting the Facebook live button from my own page. Um, I thought, okay, Ed's been teaching us about this. I'm going to use these tools. And I wanted to look into two tools and compare them. And so one of them, um, I went onto their website and I liked what I saw, but I was a little confused about how it worked, how their pricing plan worked, the way they had worded it. And so I contacted customer support and their response almost literally was did you read our FAQs you'll find the information there well listen first of all I did but secondly even if I hadn't have, you have a potential customer who contacted you to say I'm interested in your product but I'm not clear on these on what's different between these two pricing models so I'm that close to a sale and your response is go read our FAQs Bye, Felicia. Yeah. Because, because, and I even said to the guy, because I like to give feedback because I like it myself, yes. good, bad, or indifferent. Tell me what I need to change. So I said to him very politely after like a couple of it, because I, I said, of course, you know, I don't quite under, I did read it actually. Thank you so much for that suggestion. Right. But, but I still don't quite understand. He again, for the second time then said, um, you know, it's in there. If you just look uh, about halfway down in the FAQs, you'll see the, the charts that compare. So I said, um, okay, well, thanks so much. I said, you know, it's just something to keep in mind that when a potential customer contacts you, you might want to give them the answer. I'm assuming you've read your FAQs, even if I haven't, <laughs> you have. You know, it would have been easier for me if you had said, here's the difference, ma'am. Anyway, I went with the other tool because that is <laughs> I, I don't trust your customer service. If it doesn't work and I contact you, yeah. I don't, I'm not expecting a lot of help. And that yeah. is key, you guys. If you pull nothing else, because we, we've given so much good stuff in this episode, but if you pull nothing else, and don't forget to share and tag a friend, but if you pull nothing else from this episode, Pull that customer service, not just customer service, but good customer service. I will tell you, and this is something I've done all my life pretty much, and, and I'm doing it more so now for, for clients, but um, when it comes to customer service, even if, let's say that example that they pointed Mickey to the FAQs, okay, but why not just post the link and a screenshot or Nowadays, you can do a video recording real easy using a free tool called Loom. There you go for those who need it. Um, like, go uh, go an extra step, just just a little bit, to kind of get them in the right direction. I can't tell you how much that makes a huge difference for people, even if you just acknowledge and say, "Well, we do have this in our FAQs, which can be found here." However, I have provided for your convenience the exact phrasing here. If anything is, uh, if, if you don't understand anything, please let me know and I'd be glad to point you in the right direction or be able to do X, Y, Z. I mean that, you know, you can word it a little differently, but that's a simple yeah. response that, remember, cuts down on your back and forth time because chances are, like Nikki said, she reached out again. So if you're really trying to cut down on your uh, emails, then you need to make sure that you provide the uh, value up front. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's show the product they can understand. Yes. Yeah. Even yeah. if you and think that they should have understood it the first time. Right. <laughs> they don't. And that's the thing. I think everybody, we, we do, but even they, as business owners yeah, and entrepreneurs, we have, to, we have to realize our customers don't understand it. We have to tell them yep. all the yeah. time. 
and, all and the time. We have I have love, always come from um, the place of they don't get it. We need to be clear all yes. the time. Always come from the place of they don't get it. So yeah. critical. That's what I love about um, this forum and these conversations. And when we're um, chatting in the comments in uh, following an episode um, of Ed Talk TV is that we can hear other people's input about our thoughts and ideas because in our head, it's super clear, right? right? You wouldn't understand this. And we publish content like that on our websites and on our marketing materials and in our lives. And it's clear to us. And it's so critical to engage like this, even to have other people, even just when they ask a question, hey, can you tell me more about or what did you mean by that's our light bulb? Like, oh, was that not super clear? OK, and we don't mind. We're not like the guy at that customer service line that I mentioned. Of course, we don't mind um, elaborating further. But what's significant to us is to know it wasn't as clear as I thought it was. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and to use that feedback, actually apply it. I mean, how many how many people like have been asked questions like that? And they're like, oh, you didn't get it. Uh, da, 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 and they don't change anything. Right. And it's just like, come on. Oh, good. They yes. don't change their delivery for the next time. Right. That's good. And you, That's good. You have to make note, you guys. You have to make note when these things come up. If you have more than one, two, three people telling you pretty similar stories, um, giving you that feedback that's pretty darn similar, you better be making note to circle back when you have time, and I mean make time, to go through and verify, is this confusing? Because if it's confusing, you lose the sale. If it's confusing, you lose your customer. If it's yeah. confusing, you don't have an audience, which means you're not in business. And so right. you really have to understand that that's important for everybody. It's not, that's why I say, look at feedback as strengths and opportunities. Don't look at it as, Strengths are, don't look at it as somebody's either telling you you're really good at something or you're really bad. Like, get that out of your mind. Oh. Because when you take away. It's neither that praise nor criticism. It's information. Yes. yes. Information. Yes. Don't attach yes. your ego yes. to it. It's not right. praise. Yes. It's not criticism. It's data. Yes. It's information. And what are you going to do? differently with your business model and your delivery and your content, and your marketing based on that data you just got. I that's love golden. it. Yes. It's information there. I'm putting up on the screen, you guys, because that's, that's a big one yes. that I want you to understand because that's see, even Whitney's like, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> And, and, and that's the, you know, the big thing uh, when it comes to customer service. And we'll, we'll, we'll transition a little bit. Just I want to tie in this Amazon bookstore because it, it ties into the retail and the online and customer service. Now, um, I forget, um, Mickey, I can't remember if it was you or Erica who had sent the, the Amazon book. Erica did. Erica. I was shocked. I was like, what? Yeah. So talk yeah, a little bit about that. Yeah, it surprised me when I learned that they were opening brick and mortar stores. I'm just like, wait, what? Yeah. Why are you doing that? That admit that seems like right? you're going reverting back, and it just—it's weird. And I just thought it was so funny. And then, what, and I hadn't even realized. I thought they only had a couple of locations. I didn't realize they had several. Not yeah. only that, but more that are coming soon down the line. And it's just like, okay, so is this working? That's interesting. And so, yeah, I mean, I was really kind of—I'm still kind of like, huh. They is have, this going to be something y'all are going to, like, stores. is this going to work? I don't know. They have 15 stores right now with three on the way. You guys, it is nuts. Now, here is the thing, and I, I haven't read through the whole thing. Um, we are going to talk about uh, a section that they have on this page. But what's interesting, and I'm totally just pulling this out of the air right now, is when you think about the power Amazon has, okay, they started as – an online retailer, by the way, I can't remember the exact um, time frame, but when I was reading one of my books, because that's what I do, um, it took them f seven years before they turned their first profit. Seven years. Oh. So remember that when you're in your business six months in, a year in, and you really haven't turned a profit, remember that. Um, now, Amazon, if you think about it, and again, I'm just, just pulling this together from my head, um, they started online, so low overhead. They yeah. started with customer feedback because they know what people are buying and what they're searching for. So it's kind of like the power of Google, right? 
Uh, so they have that information. They also know, because they're studying, assuming they're, they're doing their market research, what brick and mortar are doing, what the retail life is doing, and what they've done in the past. So they, they have this low overhead business starting out, and they have all this information coming in here. They have all this information over here from the market research, which you can't see, but there we go. Um, and they combined it together to then build up this empire online with low overhead that just needs warehouses, that ships you your products, so then they have the shipping costs, which they're bringing that down, and they're doing a whole fleet you know, on that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now they have the upper hand to then go ahead and say, well... Let's go ahead and open up a store because we actually know what people want. Mm. They want this product. Oh, they and you won't see, have unbought inventory. I see of that little paragraph that they had in there, which I completely zoned out and forgot about, is that they stock the stores with books that are selling well on Amazon, four stars or above, ones that they already know are popular, yep. so that way they know those ones will move, which is like, of course, exactly. brilliant. Exactly. Yeah. And for Amazon, guys, I was just thinking as we're kind of talking this out, their online game is so strong. This is like a, just an added revenue stream for them. Right. Worst case scenario, it doesn't make a profit. Shut them down, and you're still Amazon. Still Amazon, you're, right? That's true. <laughs> you are not limited. It's like us posting affiliate links or something. That's not the basis of our business model. That's an additional revenue stream. And if that went away for some reason, we're not out of business. Yep, we're true. just like, oh, okay, that revenue stream wasn't the one. Yep, and that actually, I'm glad you brought that up because you guys, you have to understand, uh, this was also in my uh, book. It's called The Four, uh, by the way. If anybody's interested, uh, let me know and I can provide the link. But um what they talk about, too, is that part, is that Amazon, because of the way that they started their business and the way that they've grown, they have so much money that they, capital, that they can play. They can build these stores. And if it, if it goes to crap, it's like, okay, well, we learned a lesson and we'll just do something else. So Like we dropped a penny on that. We're good. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, for the rest of us, we're like, that's crazy. Right. But... It's because right. they've done their research. They've built yeah. up this empire going through the steps and learning along the way and still continue to innovate. They keep pivoting yeah. and knowing what works for them yeah. and maybe what doesn't. And then um, from this, I'm going to read their uh, just a little section of their about on this about page because actually I'm going to – no, I don't want to change screens because we're doing so good with tech. I don't want to change screens. Um, so you guys will see all of us still. But on this store um, link that they have, they have an about section. And for those uh, who weren't here yesterday, we talked about the about section on your website and how you want to break it down. And if you have just one little section, it can be uh, a, a paragraph or two on your homepage. And then you can upgrade later to a full-on page or a blog post and all of that. So what Amazon Books is... Quote, about Amazon Books, as a physical extension of Amazon.com, Amazon Books integrates the benefits of offline and online shopping to help you find books and devices you'll love. We select books based on Amazon.com customers, customer ratings, pre-orders, orders, or I should say sales, Popularity on Goodreads. Oh, oh, uh, that sounds like teamwork there. Teamwork equals success. What I tell you guys. Yeah. And our curator's assessments. We place books face out on the shelves so each can communicate its own essence. Under each book is a review card with the Amazon.com Amazon .com customer rating and review. Most have been rated four stars or above, and many are award winners. Okay, you guys, that was all one paragraph, short, sweet, and I'm going to pick apart that for a second, and then we'll turn it over to the panel here. You have to think, it knows 
what you want based off of all of this information. It's giving you kind of some ideas of what you may want. It's talking about how they're combining the online and offline because they know that you want to come to the store. They know that we still want to feel that experience of walking into a bookstore and just to go somewhere. They also are talking about how they are not only basing it off of their information, but now they've partnered with another business to be able to get their information based off of their users to go through all of this. Like, and there's more, there's like two other paragraphs, but like just that paragraph, you can look at that and be like, dang, that's, that's like, I feel, I mean, that, that gives you a whole feeling right there. If yeah. you're looking for an about section, you're going to want to reference this because that will help you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What I loved about that being an author yeah. is when they said that the books were going to be facing front. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, that's yes. cool. Because, I mean, we say we don't judge a book by its cover, but oh, we do. We do. And we, sure do. Like, we absolutely do. And I'm just like, if all of the covers are facing me instead of me looking at their spines and then totally missing them. Yep. I mean, talk about a sensory lo- overload in a way to me yeah. in a good way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, color, more color. It adds all of that more vibrancy in the store even. So you guys totally. probably can't see this really well, but this book was at Barnes & Noble. This is an old book, but this was at Barnes & Noble sitting like this on the shelf. When I pulled that out, it was like this, and you can't see it because it's clear, but just this design, it's kind of a peachy orange, uh, white, and then you see through this book. I didn't care what was in it. It was so damn sexy that I had to sit down and read it a little bit and then realize it's a marketing book. I'm going to love it. I sat there, read it for a couple, uh, well, I won't say a couple hours cause that's giving me too much credit. I probably only was there for 20 minutes. Um, and then I bought it and I took it home and read it. I didn't even care if it sat on the shelf. I just liked the book. So that is yeah. a big selling point is just being able to see the cover. Oh, I see. I see now that now that the light hit it a little bit differently. I yeah. see how it's kind of reflective. That's awesome. Yeah. And it was, it, you know what? It probably, I don't think, to be honest, I don't think that that was the spine facing. I think it was facing forward and that's what got my attention. I think that's, I think it was that example that you mentioned. Yeah. 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 It seems so honoring to books if you're a bookworm too, talking about that customer experience to yeah. walk in and see the book displayed, any book displayed. It seems so like, oh, if you're a real bookworm, it's very honoring to the books. They're, they're getting to show their front to us yeah. instead of being, you know, all crunched to the side. Well, and, and even yeah. the cover designers. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean yeah. that's coolest thing i mean my cover designer who, who designed reframe it i mean i think that she would just like be beside herself to think that oh my cover is visible in an amazon bookstore how cool is that well and people will see the work remember you yes. guys when blockbuster was around how many of us loved going through i would walk the whole entire wall the store yeah. go all the way around to see the cover the of front face, the see. videos yeah, DVDs because yes. that catches our eye. When you bring it to the new and improved, which is now Netflix, um, mm-hmm. when you think about that, what happens? You go. Chances are, you go based off of the cover image, mm-hmm. and you guys, we're going to go a little bit over time here, but that's that's fine. Um, so you will notice that when you're on Netflix, you go over and you base it off of the actual cover art. Now. I don't know how for many- sure. Yeah, like I- you're scrolling, you're barely even reading the titles. You're looking for the, the that screen capture of that movie that's going to catch your eye, yeah. and then you read the title. Like that's how your brain is processing it. First, it's that picture, and then your brain decides in an instant: Do I want to even read the title of this or not? Yep. Mm-hmm. And then if that's a yes, you read the title and you put the two together, title and picture, and you're like, yes or nah, never mind. And yeah. I don't know how many of you guys have noticed this, but Netflix got smart. And again, they're they're testing this or, you know, pivoting. I don't know if it's a pivot, really. It's more of just testing. But now, if you notice, the covers rotate. 
So oh. you'll go through. Yeah, pay attention next really? time. I have an Apple TV, so I mostly go off of my oh. Apple TV. And so the cover arts will rotate. So I have watched, let's say, you know, whatever movie. And when I go back to look at the list of different ones there, I think that it's a new movie because the cover art changed. And then I click on it and I realize I've already seen this. So there. <laughs> yeah. How funny. Oh, it's very interesting. It drives me nuts because it's wasting my time because I don't even want to be on Netflix anyway. But um, it, it's, it's smart. It's smart. But you just said why they're doing it. Because yeah. you it keeps you on there a bit longer and they're hoping you'll pick a different movie. Yes. You'll watch something else and then you'll be more, you know, like I got to keep my Netflix. I watch all these movies on there. Yep. <laughs> Funny. And yeah, I don't think it does that in the app. That's interesting. Yeah, take a look. Oh, yeah. uh, Mindy said it could be A-B testing and that's true. Uh, for those who don't oh. know, A-B oh. testing is basically... Certain profiles users will see something one time, uh, and then others will see something different. It's to kind of see what what people click on, how long they stay, things like that. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting, and maybe it's only like an Apple TV type thing because on the on the mobile devices it might be too hard to have those rotate um, mm. because of the, the the system it's working with. Yeah, but that's it, true. It is very interesting, and. Um, and also that think about misleading. it. Misleading? Yeah, it's totally misleading. And <laughs> think about a misleading. <laughs> you can squirrel now. I always say squirrel. It's like, you know, squirrel. Um, but you can do that endlessly, which that drives me up the wall. I can't stand going through and then you get in that habit, you know, you're in that zone and then you're like, wait a minute. I've already scrolled through like halfway twice now. Like this is yeah. a nightmare. I want to have a stopping point. So it, it's those things that you have to think about when it comes to user experience, customer service. All yes. of that plays a part in what we're talking about here. And, and it all paints a big picture for that. Yes. Well, awesome. Okay. So any la let's wrap it up because we're, we're a little over time, but that's okay. Um, let's wrap it up. Any last words uh, from you guys uh, about anything that we covered or that we maybe didn't get to yet? I, I am so left with putting this all under the umbrella, Ed, of show up, deliver, engage. And then I want to add what Erica um, shared today that made me think and be willing to revisit your engagement. Yes. Just yeah. show up, deliver, engage, hear the customer feedback, re-engage. Yeah. Re -de deliver, I mean, no deliver and engage differently. Yes. Then show yeah. up, deliver, and engage again. Then based on that engagement, change your delivery. Show up, deliver, engage. And just that to me is that's that's business longevity. If you had to say it in three words. That's how you stay afloat. That's how you stay afloat. Yeah. You can get, don't get too comfortable. I guess if anything, you know, as we've seen with this, don't get too comfortable where you are. You always have to be one step ahead. You always have to be one step ahead because if you start and it, and it could be the reason for the demise of these stores is that perhaps the collective head just got too big and just too cocky and too overconfident and boom, they die. And so we can never allow ourselves as even as, you know, budding entrepreneurs never allow ourselves to get to that to that place because okay. then we'll, there will be no longevity for us. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I totally agree with both those points. And I will also leave you guys with this is that. Tying on to what um, has been said, you have to understand, like, even for me, and I know this is, I, I'm weird because it's in my blood and stuff, but for me, I like, I've gotten better about feeling not so guilty if I take an hour to myself on a Tuesday or something, but, like, literally, that's, like, my, my, my why is you guys, like, I want to help as many as you, uh, uh, of you, I want to help as many of you as I can, and um, how can I do that? How can I always, always do X, Y, Z? How can I make this easier for you? And, and it's that, that run, that drive, that, that motivation that keeps me on my toes. And I remind myself, like, obviously there's a time and a place where I have to rest and all that, but I remind myself, like, don't get too comfortable. Like I still wake up as if it was day one of my mm. quick day of being like, okay, can I pinch myself now? Because this doesn't feel real. Like, is this really going to last? Not because I doubt myself, but because 
it just is too good to be true, right? So, and maybe that's weird, but for me, that's the motivation. That's what keeps me going is that, no, I have to make this work. This is working. We're going to keep doing what we need to do to make it work for everyone else. And we're going to keep things going. Like, I can't get too comfortable because I'm going to lose that feel. I'm going to lose that focus, right? So you do. You have to stay up on what it is that you're... That's why you have to be passionate about it and stay up on that. Yes. Yes. Awesome. That has a lot to do with it. I appreciate you guys. I'm not even going to switch... Well, we're going to switch screens to the outro, but I appreciate everyone who uh, joined us here, both live and on the replay. Thank you guys so much for commenting. Even if you're watching the replay, still comment and let us know. We'd love to engage with you. And uh, let us know how you enjoyed this, because this was fun. And I thank our guests here. Thank you guys so much for coming in today. And we'll talk to you all soon. Take care, guys. Bye.